Hi everybody, my name is Dick Carter. I've been a contributor of MXNet for the last three and a half years. Also a, a committer and PPMC member for a year and a half. And today I'm going to be talking about the CUDA graphs support in Apache MXNet 1.8. This is work that I did uh, collaboratively with my colleagues at NVIDIA, Pshemak Tredek, and Clement Fujit Sang. So here's the outline of my talk. First, I'll introduce CUDA graphs. And this will be quite brief, frankly, because this is not a talk about CUDA graphs per se, but more about how we integrated it into MXNet. Then I'll proceed in a top-down fashion, if you will, for the average user that just wants to know how to use CUDA graphs in MXNet, I'll address that first. Then for the more advanced user who might be thinking about designing an operator and wanting that operator to be compatible with CUDA graphs, I'll, I'll address that. And then uh, finally, for you active developers out there, I'll share what factors motivated the integration approach. Finally, I'll conclude by talking about what scenarios can best benefit from CUDA graphs and our plans for future work. CUDA graphs is a feature of the CUDA driver that's been available for over two years since CUDA 10.0. But I'd say it really came of age and became interesting to a framework like MXNet when it became fully supported by CUDNN 8 earlier this year. CUDA graphs allows an application to essentially record, that is to say capture, all interactions with the CUDA driver and turn those actions into a task graph. The graph can then be instantiated into an executor that can replay those actions quite efficiently. So you can imagine how you could save a lot of repetitious CPU processing, not only in the MXNet operator code, but within the CUDNN library code and within the driver itself. And these savings could translate to end-to-end -end performance improvements in the application. There is a catch. You have to be OK with replaying the exact behavior. So the same kernels with the same parameters, data pointers, etc. And I'll talk more about this restriction in a couple of slides. Use of CUDA graphs in MXNet 1.8 is enabled by the environment variable MXNet enable CUDA graphs. This feature is off by default. Uh, you have to set this variable to one to get CUDA graphs. Now, if you're like me, you're not gonna remember the exact spelling when you get around to using it. I say just Google MXNet uh, environment variables. And as this slide shows, uh, we've got the proper online documentation for you. Uh, you also see there are a couple of additional uh, environment variables I won't go into, but it's basically to help you confirm the use and extent of use of CUDA graphs in MXNet. Uh, also important to note, you'll need a build with CUDA version 10.2 or later, also CUDNN 8. And or later. And finally, you'll need a model made with MXNet's uh, symbolic programming style, or if you're using the imperative, that is to say, Gluon style, it needs to be a hybridized model with static alloc and static shape both true. So now regarding the topic of operator compatibility with CUDA graphs, uh, the good news is we've looked over the operators and most are compatible by default, including the ones that require the temporary workspace. However, we do exclude stateful ops from CUDA graphs. And the reason being those operators are probably stateful so they can modify their behavior from one iteration to the next. And that's not CUDA graphs compatible. Now for those advanced users designed to create a new operator that they want to be compatible with CUDA graphs, here's a list of behaviors to avoid. I think of these as fairly uncommon behaviors, frankly. Uh, but they all actually make sense when you think about 
the fact that the operator needs to have a consistent behavior for, from one iteration to the next uh, to be compatible with CUDA graphs. So for example, taking the first item, uh, an operator can have behavior uh, depending uh, dynamically on an environment variable lookup. The behavior of the CUDA graph would be fixed, so no longer responding to the environment variable changes. Uh, going down the list, uh, an operator cannot allocate, use, and then free GPU memory on every iteration. That memory use, when captured in the CUDA graph, would not be valid during a subsequent replay of that graph. So for the sake of time, I'll let you read the remaining items on the list. But the good news is for those operators that can't avoid these dynamic behaviors, we've introduced the is CUDA graphs compatible flag. So an operator definition can set this flag to false and the operator won't be included in CUDA graphs. Currently, there are only a couple dozen such operators that we've had to make use of this opt-out uh, among over 1,000 MXNet operators, so a very low 2%. Now I'd like to shift gears and talk about the nuts and bolts of how we integrated CUDA graphs into MXNet. So basically, the motivations that drove our integration approach. Hopefully, this will give you insight into how CUDA graphs operates within MXNet. So the first motivator of our integration approach is MXNet's use of what are called bulk operator segments. What I'm showing here in this slide is how MXNet's CPU executor pushes work to the GPU. It doesn't push the entire compute graph all at once, uh, nor does it push each operator's work separately with intervening GPU synchronization. The operators are grouped into bulk operator segments, and the entire bulk's work is pushed to the GPU before a synchronization is performed. Typically in a training scenario, the entire forward graph is treated as one bulk, and a number of bulks make up the backward graph processing. This is so the CPU can start further processing of gradients as they become available during the backward graph processing. For example, gradient reduction in a multi-GPU training scenario. Now, what does this mean for CUDA graphs? Basically, we align the CUDA graphs with the bulk operator segments. One CUDA graph per segment, which preserves the GPU synchronization points. Now, I talked earlier about ops that aren't compatible with CUDA graphs. Those ops are handled conventionally outside of any CUDA graph, though this does increase the number of CUDA graphs used. The second motivating factor we had to take into account in our integration of CUDA graphs was MXNet's temp space allocation. So first, some background. The temp space is an allocation in GPU global memory that is shared by all of the operators in MXNet's compute graph. The temp space is used by an operator as a scratch pad memory useful in performing the operator's function. Uh, Kudinen would call this a workspace. Because the temp space pointer is an argument to Kudinen's kernel launches, it will be captured by the CUDA graphs. Now what I'm showing in this slide is what might actually happen in the temp space allocation over the first two iterations of compute graph processing. The vertical bars signify the amount of temp space memory requested by the sequence of operators of the graph. The colors indicate the different temp space allocations that are used. The system holds on to its current temp space allocation as long as it's big enough to satisfy the request. If not, it frees the allocation and CUDA mallocs a bigger region but that will be somewhere else in GPU global memory. Importantly, this would invalidate any CUDA graph that captured the stale temp space pointer as an argument to a kernel launch. So how do we react to all of this? First, we defer any graph capture to the second iteration, at which point 
as you can see by the purple bars on the right half of the slide, the temp space allocation is stabilized. Also, to build some robustness into the system, we always check the temp space prior to launching a captured graph. If the temp space has changed, we recapture the graph. Now the final design motivator I want to talk about is the different behaviors the same model can exhibit in a training versus validation mode. It is typical in a training model to train for an entire epoch, then switch to validation, then train for another epoch, back to validation, and so forth. This is done without changing models. It's the same model, but the only thing that changes is the state of the so-called isTrain flag in the context. Now an operator like convolution behaves the same in a training versus validation mode. Now I won't bother you uh, with the details, but you can see in the chart that an operator like batch norm does vary its behavior. In terms of CUDA graph support, we pay special consideration to the is train flag. The approach is simple enough. We maintain two separate graphs to capture the varying behavior of the training versus validation mode. So now to conclude, CUDA graphs is part of MXNet 1.8 and it's ready for you to try. And I hope I've conveyed some of the careful thought that went into its integration. It's fair at this point to ask, well, under what scenarios would I expect to see a benefit of using CUDA graphs? So generally speaking, it would be those cases when CPU processing and launch overheads are affecting the performance. So for example, uh, scale out applications or inference models with small batch size. Also cases where the CPU is in demand for other tasks like image pipeline. Finally, as GPU power grows, kernel runtimes shrink for a given model of a fixed size. And that puts more burden on the CPU to keep up and more of a reason to turn to CUDA graphs for relief. And just to highlight one success story, uh, here's a, a result in the uh, bar chart to the right from Moises Hernandez, who is presenting his work today on the BERT model. Uh, with a batch size of one, uh, his uh, use of CUDA graphs yield a 7.8% speed up with a sequence length of 128 and a 21% speed up with a se sequence length of 20. Moving forward now, uh, we plan on expanding our support of CUDA graphs. We plan to upstream it to the master branch, so it'll become part of MXNet 2.0. And after a period of use with the broader community, we'd like to uh, have it enabled by default. Finally, we'll work to reduce the number of incompatible operators, both by a focused attention on those operators uh, in their implementations, but also a generalized improvements in the CUDA graph support. And with that, thank you, and thanks for your interest in CUDA graphs on MXNet.